In the book Thanos Titan Consumed, when the lore speaker talks about the secrets of the universe, he mentions the Celestials. It's interesting because he doesn't go too much into specifics, but he does mention that the Celestials were the first beings kind of created in this universe, but also that there are beings that even the Celestials fear. And these beings are said to keep watch on the Infinity Stones along with the Celestials. It's been a big secret in the MCU up until this point about how the Celestials died out, or at least mysteriously disappeared, considering the only Celestial we've seen in present day was Ego. And even Ego kind of downplayed his level of, I guess, not importance, but power amongst space gods, things like that, because he said, you know, like lowercase g, which indicated that there was a superior g above him. Like I said before, Ego is the only Celestial we've seen alive in the present day. Besides Ego, the only Celestial we've seen was the one in the Collector's projections in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, who was wielding the Power Stone. And that had to have been a long time ago because the Power Stone was left on Morag by the events of Guardians of the Galaxy. And it was even said on Morag that due to the environment of Morag, I think it was like rising tides or something like that, only a few hundred years does that temple the Power Stone was in become available for entry. And it's also worth noting that the dead Celestial that became Nowhere can't have been from a natural death considering the Celestials are immortal according to Ego. Thus some sort of logic kind of says something must have killed the Celestials or at least that Celestial. What could have killed a Celestial? And if you look in the comics that brings us to a race of beings called the Horde. Now appearing in the Eternals number one back in 2008, these beings kind of look like bugs but are actually really cosmic beings that feed off of life energy. And because they did appear in the Eternals number one, you can see how maybe the Eternals might play a part with their introduction into the MCU or vice versa. They may have further development in the Eternals movie. I'm not saying that's anything confirmed, but I'm just saying at least you have that connection, that basis there from the comics. And they're actually kind of similar to Galactus in the way of how they kind of feed off life energy because they're presented as a destructive force balancing out the creative force of the Celestials. They're also known to kill Celestials in order to consume their life energies if they desire or even infect Celestials turning them into things called Dark Celestials. So during a recent event in Marvel Comics, a part of the Horde actually hatched from dormant eggs within the Earth's core, and along with the Celestials, the Avengers teamed up with the Eternals to defeat them. And I'm sure with creative liberties like the MCU likes doing, this could very well be manipulated into Annihilus and his Annihilation Wave, due to the fact that Annihilus does have a very insect bug-like appearance, and the Horde does as well. Now if the Horde is retconned into being the MCU equivalent of the Annihilation Wave, is there really a way of having a Nihilus be a cosmic being or at least a being amongst cosmic beings? And the answer to that is kind of a yes and a no, because in the comics, a Nihilus has something called a Cosmic Control Rod, which gives him various cosmic abilities. And if they do go this route, it'd be really interesting to me personally to see if they present a Nihilus in the Annihilation Wave as an agent of destruction opposite of the Celestials. So maybe the universe was as such that there was, in a grand scheme of things, from a grand view, there was some sort of balance. So that would explain why the Celestials, and also I guess the Horde in this instance, or Annihilation Wave and Annihilus, weren't that active because there was no balance they were trying to achieve at this point. They reached that equilibrium already. However, when you eliminate half of all life in the universe, even life that maybe should progress the way it is and probably will balance itself down the line, you upset the natural order of things. And we actually got a cool hint in Doctor Strange about how there is a natural order. And you don't mess with the natural order. And maybe things like this is why. Because when you mess with the natural order of things to a certain extent, you also mess with the cosmic hierarchy. And you cause things to come into play that maybe weren't going to come into play before because they didn't need to. Maybe you awaken things like the Horde for example or Annihilus and his Annihilation Wave that now decide to kind of clean house or do something along the lines of you know whatever they're going to do if they're active which if they're agents of destruction they're going to destroy a bunch of stuff. Like I said before this would explain how Thanos' actions maybe awoke a grander threat that would require everyone to kind of come together to stop it but this is just speculation I just was curious to hear your guys thoughts on it. Comment below what you guys thoughts. I think this would be an interesting way to introduce Annihilus and his Annihilation Wave in the event that Avengers 4 is actually called Avengers Annihilation. Comment below and we'll see you guys later.